What is self-sorcery? It's in the chaos of these times that I've been called to create and share this audiobook, because chaos is the mother of creation. But what, exactly, is self-sorcery? It's super simple, yet thoroughly complex. Yep, as is the way of the feminine, and this audiobook is placed firmly in the realm of feminine magic, because we need it more than ever. Self-sorcery is paradoxical, because there's nothing to learn and everything to remember. It's archetypal, mythical, and ancient. And it's real-time, parallel, present, and future, all at the same time. It's self-love, only to avoid the eye rolls that the term self-love often evokes. Let's call it you in deep and delicious relationship with your body. You, with the deepest compassion for yourself, your body and your experience. Returning to and coming into alignment with your true and real nature. You, recognising and acknowledging what your needs, wants and desires are from that place. You, taking fierce responsibility for sourcing those needs, wants and desires through your body's wisdom and intelligence, without shame, guilt or embarrassment. It's liberation. Self-sorcery unhooks you from the incessant need to seek and strive, the what next and fear, freakery and the conditioned belief that you need to be good. And it allows you to create a stretchy and permeable container in which you get to set the boundaries. Choose what you believe and align with. Fill yourself up. Nourish yourself. Cultivate your energetics and remember your magic. The magnetic magic and wisdom that's held cell deep to show up through you and for you. It's magic. Your magic. Self-sorcery is awakening to and working with your innate feminine magic, the power of your presence, your creative force, and the cyclical and rhythmic intelligence of your body, the earth, and the cosmos to create, regenerate, trust, grow, and heal. It's not a formula. It's a frequency. Your unique-to-you frequency. Note, I'm not here to teach you any of this. My intention is always to simply share and to be a guidess supporting your remembrance. Surrender to it all. Since writing Witch, the book where I first shared the sorceress as an archetypal energetic force, and, as is the way when you're someone who lives in the mythos and the mystery of all things, I've had my own initiation with her, Source. And one thing I know to be true is that if you declare to Source in a book called Witch, let's come undone. You can guarantee that she will, by any means necessary, ensure that you do indeed, with all the fiercest love, come undone. That you will find yourself in the dark, the chaotic and the unknown, meeting parts of yourself that, well, you really don't like or have previously tried really hard to ignore. Old stories and conditioning that have been buried deep in our psyche. All the mistruths about our bodies, our menstrual blood and who we are. The spell of the good girl. And the fears, oh my goddess, the fears. The fear of the repercussions of being someone who draws too much attention to themselves or takes up too much space. The fear of being abandoned for daring to shine too brightly. The fear of being punished for experiencing pleasure, desire and sensuality. Yep, when you say, as I did, that, as witches, we self-source, create ritual and celebrate our bodies so that when others spend time in our presence and wholeness, they remember themselves too, you can be damn sure that she will support you, kick your ass, initiate the shit out of you, so that you do exactly that. But first, you have to surrender. You surrender to it all. The pain, the trauma, the stories about who you are that are not and never will be true. And, like the serpent in every tale about notorious and powerful women, well, certainly in those that I choose to read and to tell, you shed, audaciously, and you keep shedding till you're bone deep. Down to the bones. Ever heard the phrase, I know it in my bones? 
My nana used to say it, and no one disagreed with her because she did know it. And by it, I mean everything, in her bones. My nana, who you may have met through my stories about her in other books, was my very own version of Laloba, a mythical woman of the indigenous American Pueblo peoples, the witch who lived on the edge of society and collected the bones of the dead. Laloba would sing to the bones, and as she sang, they'd begin to fuse. Flesh and fur would appear, and eventually a wolf would form and run out into the wild. But the bones my nana collected were animal bones to make broth, a broth that seemed to be boiling on the hob for my entire childhood, probably because it was. She'd sing Irish folk songs over that broth as she stirred it to ensure that what we ate was infused with good intentions something I continue to do today when I'm making food for myself and others. The good news? When we surrender to all that we think we know, when we shed layer by layer down to the bone, down into the marrow where blood is made, we're in the deepest, most resonant part of ourself. It's here that we can locate and orientate, even in the dark, especially in the dark. And we too can, with intention, sing, and dance and drum back our wildness, our wild, primal, instinctual, underneath it all, real and true, mother-loving nature, our sorcery. We land in the power of the earth. We land in our bodies. We land in Mama Earth. Our bones resonate together and we're grounded, rooted into this time and this space, the here and now, present to our presence. And when we're bone deep and connected to the dark, rich, fertile soil of the earth, then we have capacity, stretchy capacity, to stay connected to the magnetic primal force of Mama Earth through our body and to let our body, more specifically our pelvic bowl, our centre, become a vessel, a sacred container to open to the vastness of all that is, simultaneously, at the same time. Yet, you're able to remember that you're a gloriously cyclical, rhythmical, primal, instinctual, magnetic, self-sensory being who's connected to the earth as earth, through your body. Connected to divinity as divinity, through your body. Connected to the cosmos as the cosmos through your body. You remember Ma, the great Ma. You remember that you have access to billions of years of Ma healing and wisdom in your body. Slowly and with fierce love, you sing back your wild. You reveal what's real and you remember your magic. You create capacity. Your capacity to alchemize and metabolize, to recalibrate and regenerate. Your capacity to acknowledge, trust and self-regulate your nervous system. And to feel really good about being in your body. Your capacity to locate and sense your deeper, truer needs. To sense it all. To sniff it out, track it, map it, taste it, feel, hear, witness and experience all of the things, said and not said, seen and not seen. Your capacity to take fierce self-responsibility, to discern and to act accordingly. Your capacity to choose and to change your mind. Your capacity to experience pleasure and joy. Your capacity to source your own power, authority and life force. Be the sorceress. Look, I won't lie, the self-sorcery process can be gnarly. And it can also be really bloody brilliant. That's what happens when we live in the fullness of our possibility. It's the most potent medicine of all. The ever-unfolding paradoxes that untether us from our often grippy need to control all of the things. Our need to be sure and to be right so that we're able, with the fiercest compassion, to reclaim Lilith, to reclaim Mary Magdalene, to reclaim all of the women throughout time and space 
who were exiled, burned, drowned, maligned, shamed, called mad and hysterical and punished for who they were and what they knew. So that we're able, with potency, power and reverence, to return. Return it all home. To them, to us, to our bodies, to the earth so that we're able to fully embody and become the archetypal, mythical and very real sorceress. She who is charmed and dangerous and is not afraid of the dark. She who trusts herself, her inner sight, her bone-deep wisdom. She who tends to, nourishes, holds and regulates herself. She who honours and satiates her hunger, needs, wants and desires without blame, shame or judgment. She who makes magic and medicine, possibly the potion kind, but definitely the elemental and alchemical metabolizing of all things through the body kind. She who is able to hold space for multiple possibilities, experiences and outcomes as we navigate, liberate, create and thrive on this planet all at the same time. If which was the call, then self-sorcery is the response. It's cell-deep nourishment and regeneration for those who are on this sorcerous path. It's the ability to metabolise, alchemise and grieve for the death of what's been before and to be a fully aligned with the divine co-creator of what comes next. It's an attunement and full and deep integration. It's magic and it's real because magic is real. It's feminine artistry. It's a dance with the divine. It's a bit sciency, if you want it to be. And it's a fully lived and felt experience. It's a recognition of the trauma and or programmed pain of these times. And an ever fiercer recognition that when we live fully inside our skin as a whole being, we have the power, wisdom and agency in our bodies through our return to Ma, our primordial power, our reconnection to her cyclical maps of intelligence, our return to nature and our own real and true nature. As cunning folk, alchemists, magic makers, witches, wise ones, to embrace simultaneously the pleasure and pain of this life-living experience and make much-needed sorcery, magic and medicine, for ourselves, each other and the collective. Self-sorcery is you, fully sourced, by source, nourished, fully satiated, orientated toward life while knowing death intimately, following your oracular wisdom, your inner sight and Gnostic knowing, and trusting the ever-unfolding revealment of being in your body and living your rhythm.